Love Gunpla but short on money and time? I feel ya. If you're looking to up your Gunpla game but want to do it on the cheap and fast, then you are in the right place. Welcome to Mecha Guy Kotsu's 10 Cheap and Lazy Gunpla Hacks. First off, I'll mention that everything I use in this video I bought in a discount store or I had lying around the house, and that's a whole bunch of toothpicks, some cotton buds, super glue, a travel size squirt bottle, some extremely cheap oil paints, but in particular, just this one right here, burnt umber, some Kleenex for your tears, in the end I actually never use these, some lighter fluid, matte black spray paint, some sanding blocks, optional, and finally some standard, off-brand, Ziploc bags. So before I actually get into the meat of this video, first off I have to thank this video's sponsor, which is Skillshare. In case you don't know what Skillshare is, it's an online learning community for creators with more than 25,000 classes in design, business and more. Premium membership gives you unlimited access so you can join classes and communities that are just right for you and your new goals. Whether you want to fuel your curiosity, creativity or even career, Skillshare is the perfect place to keep you learning and thriving in 2019. As long as I've been running this channel, Channel, I've always struggled with one thing and that is photography. I'm rarely happy with the shots that I take for Instagram and even more so with the shots that I take for thumbnails. I'm always disappointed to some degree. I know my biggest battle is with lighting and setup. So for me personally I'm using Skillshare to up my lighting and setup game to try and bring my photography to the next level and hopefully in the next few weeks you'll be seeing a marked difference in the quality of thumbnails. Even more impactful shots so if you're interested in checking out Skillshare, it's also super affordable. An annual subscription is less than $10 a month and you can join more than 7 million creators learning with Skillshare today through that link down there in the description. And the first 500 of my subscribers to use that link will get a two month free trial. So I recommend giving it a go. So in the spirit of learning some new skills, let's get into those 10 cheap and lazy Gunpla hacks. At number 10 in this list and one you might recognize because I did do a full video on this is how to tighten the joints on a Gundam the cheap and lazy way. So if you've got a kit like the 1100 Barbatos Lupus Rex here that just can't hold up its weapons because of its floppy floppy arms, thankfully this is an extremely simple fix. The basic gist of it is you need to thicken up the parts in the joint so that there's more traction between them. There are a lot of different things you can use to achieve this and personally I recommend using an acrylic top coat. Either one you spray on or paint on but this I find is the best. Other options are using a paint like an acrylic paint right here. I've also used clear top coat nail varnish but some people have mentioned in that video that with some nail varnishes there are some nasty chemicals in there that can corrode and damage your plastic. So probably the simplest and easiest thing you can get to do this with is super glue. Most people have it lying around so basically you take your top coat paint or super glue, paint it onto the business section of the joint. Of course make sure to let it dry before putting it back together and there you go, instantly fixed. If you want to see more about that though, you can check out the full video. So now moving on to hack number 9 and finally you've got your Gundam into that absolutely perfect pose. Just like right here we've got Narrative Kuhn throwing down with Zombie Chan and as awesome as Narrative is looking right there, there's something a little bit off. Yep, that beam saber. As dynamic as Narrative looks in this pose right here, he is let down by that straight basic looking beam saber. It's not dynamic at all. What can we do? Well, what if I told you that making this beam saber a little bit more dynamic is as simple as making a cup of tea. Just throw that beam saber in a cup like it was a tea bag, pour in some boiling water, be careful not to burn yourself and chihuahua cup not required. Leave it in there for about five minutes. Be careful of your fingers when you fish it out. And at this point, the beam saber will be pliable. So just bend this into a nice curve, hold it in place, blow on it, and this will eventually hold this position. I recommend only doing this once. If you do it multiple times, you could get a kink in it, like I did. But if done in one single swift motion, you'll get a perfect bend. And there we go. Narrative Kuhn has gone from basic to absolutely dynamic in one simple step. So finally, that Gunpla collection is coming together very nicely, looking good. But wait, what's this? Hmm, seems like we've got a case of can't see the forest for the Gundams. Real grades are way too awesome not to be visible like this back row right here. Mm, same over here. Ha! And down here with the IBO Gundam frames. Seriously, what am I gonna do? Well, what if I told you this is a case of one man's trash is another man's Gundam display? So all you're gonna need for this hack is a leftover Gundam box as well as that matte spray paint I mentioned earlier on. So essentially what we're gonna do right here is cut this box in half. First, I cut 
the top section of the box in half, flip the bottom around, cut the bottom exactly the same as we did with the top, just to make sure that the bottom and top are cut the same size, rip it in half so you've got two sections. So just take one of those halves, flip the inner gray section around just to maintain structural support, spray the whole thing in matte black or whatever matte color matches your display case, take all of your awesome Gundams off the shelf, slot in your new DIY riser, put all your awesome Gundams back in again, and there we go. So simple, but so effective, and this actually looks great. Honestly, you would never guess that that was a Gundam box. At number 7, it seems like Nardov Kun and Zombie Chan are at it again, and this time a fight has broken out over a game of Dragon Ball Uno. But once again, Nardov Kun isn't really looking all that dynamic, is he? There's just something about a beam rifle looking a bit on the blank side. And this right here is where your beam effects could come into play again. Nardov Kun did notice that his neighbors downstairs, the robot Damashi Ver anime figures, have some awesome shooting effect parts. But the one the Gym Sniper 2 has just literally looks like a beam saber. So essentially, if the robot spirit's Gym Sniper 2 can do it, why can't the high-grade narrative? So literally, you can just take your beam sabers and stick them into your beam rifles for this awesome looking shooting effect. With some kits you may have to pare down the peg in the end, or even thicken them up to some degree, but they still look great once you get them in there. So coming up at number 6, and this tip is more lazy than cheap, as you will need Bandai's Gundam markers, the panel lining type that is. Also you will have seen this before because I did a full video on it, and it's how to pan line Gundams the lazy way. Essentially what we're going to do is take these markers, scribble into all these lines as fast as possible, and then using the magic of a plastic eraser, it will clean up everything but what's in the panel line. With these markers you can also get some awesome effects like fades, just by scribbling in areas like on this vent here, blending it away into a bit of a gradient with a cotton bud. We can also fill in block areas and do the exact same thing, fading these into a gradient, and it definitely makes these flat, colourless pieces of plastic look a lot more dynamic. Lastly then, using the exact same fading technique, we can pick out areas of detail that would otherwise be lost, like this little section up here on the shoulder. These really are lazy and fast techniques, but they do so much for a Gundam. It goes from basic and flat to dynamic with all that detail brought out. Once again, if you do want to see this in more detail, I do have a full video of how to do this. Dropping in then at number 5, and you've just finished an absolutely awesome kit, like the Master Grade New Gundam Verka, and wait a minute, you just spent all your money on this kit, so no panel liners. So what are we going to do about all that lost detail they're screaming to be brought out, but you don't have any panel lining markers? Well, essentially, you can just use a pencil. Right here, I'm using a mechanical pencil with an eraser on top, so you get both in one. But I do recommend actually using a proper sharpened pencil, maybe something like a 2B, soft and dark. Again, this is the cheap and lazy way, not necessarily the right way, so it won't be as effective as if you did use actual panel lining markers. But as you can see right there, it does work, the eraser does work, and you can also apply a lot of the same techniques, like filling in areas like this does bring out that detail up on the shoulder. Again, this isn't necessarily optimal, will only work on wide, but then again, it's better than nothing. So you've just finished off another little awesome Gompla kit, and at number four, we've got another cheap and lazy solution. Finally, that awesome little guy is up in his final resting place up on your shelf, as well as his accessories. But wait a minute, what is this? We've got a whole mountain of stuff left over. Sure, you could just put it back in the model kit's box, but sure, that is an absolutely fine option when you've got one, five, maybe ten Gundams. But once it starts getting into the triple digits, which it will, you don't want your house to end up like the Thunder King of Tokyo's, do you? Well, maybe you do. But this right here is where the Ziploc bags come in. This is exactly the way I store my leftover accessories, so I just chop out the picture of the box. Be careful while doing this and never cut towards yourself like I'm doing right here. That's how I got this nasty scar on this finger. So of course, always be safe with knives. Just take all of those parts, pop them into the Ziploc bag, take that picture we cut out from the front of the box, slide it in there so you can tell what parts these are from, and it also helps make sure that beams don't get bent in the bag, and keep those decals from getting destroyed by all that plastic shrapnel. This is the way that I store my accessories now. A lot of the ones I stored before, I didn't use the box segment in the Ziploc bag, I highly recommend you do, it does protect them. You can separate them out into different boxes by grade, and you'll always be able to find them. It's such a handy, dandy tip. 
So coming into the last three tips, and what is this? You finished another absolutely awesome Gunpla kit. This time around, it's the monster that is the XS Gundam, but it looks like Bandai decided to skip out a bit and not include any water slide transfers, just regular stickers. So this right here is two tips in one. The best way I find to attach these stickers is by using toothpicks. They don't really stick to the stickers, and you don't have as much static issues that you have with metal tools. Or do you? Static electricity can be really annoying with these larger stickers and make it really hard to place because you keep on doing this. So how are we meant to line these suckers up? Well, that's where the little spray bottle comes in. Fill this up with water or even better, a 5% solution of soap and water. Take this section off the Gundam where you want to apply the sticker unless you want a big wet Gundam. Spray the surface with a healthy dose of your water. So this right here will stop the sticker from sticking so you can place it just right and won't destroy the adhesive on the sticker. This right here is a two-part sticker that has to line up, so this is a good example. Once you got your top one on, spray the water on the lower section, and that means you can move this sticker around to line it up just right. When you got it just where you want it, use a cotton bud to clean all the water away from around it, then squeeze all the water out from underneath with outward sweeping motions. Make sure to leave this to dry, preferably overnight, stick the pieces back on, and there we go, an absolutely perfectly lined up and placed sticker. The one over on the right shoulder I didn't do using this technique, it's not lined up correctly, and essentially, I can do nothing about it. So next up and tip number two is as cheap and lazy as you can get. Once again, I did a full video on this if you want to check it out and I found this idea over on Reddit. So all credit goes to Akazaku and essentially this is the magic to make an action base out of what comes as literally garbage inside of your Gundam box and that is the leftover runners. So this is quite simple. Find a good runner that looks like this one right here. Cut off all the parts to leave this one little section out for the stand. Any outcropping parts or nubs need to be snipped off so this can lay flat on the ground. Using a lighter then we melt and bend up what we're going to be using as the stand arm. We add a second bend then up on the top. This is where you'll be attaching your Gundam. This particular stand arm we've just made will not be strong enough to support most Gunpla, so we're going to have to add a reinforcing arm just at the base of that stand to give it some strength. Once again, this can be done with a lighter or the safest choice would be just to glue it. The final step is you may have to thicken or trim the top of the stand so it can fit into the action base hole in the bottom of your Gundam. And there you go. It may not be the prettiest action base in the world, but it sure is cheap. Actually, it's cheaper than cheap. It's free. So finally, we're into that last cheap and lazy technique. And sometimes even once you've put your kit together, panel lined it, done all of that, it just feels a little bit on the flat side. Personally, I like it when my kits look like they just walked off a Universal Century showroom floor, but some people like them a little bit muckied up. So this right here is a super fast, lazy and cheap technique I learned from the Japanese magazine Dengeki Hobby. So remember that oil paint I mentioned earlier on, Burnt Umber? Well, essentially, we're going to be using this right here to make a weathering wash. Again, we are doing this the cheap way, but the better the paint you buy, the better the result you're going to get. So basically, you're going to take a very little amount of this oil paint. We're going to need ourselves a solvent to water this down. Because this is the cheap way, we're just going to use lighter fluid. Of course, any oil paint mediums will work like turpentine or linseed oil, but we're keeping this cheap. I would say this right here is about a 6 to 1 ratio, but it will depend on the pigment in your paint. But essentially what you want is something that looks something like this. Essentially a wash. Ham-fistedly glob this all over the Zaku everywhere, making sure to get it into all the recesses and panel lines. Give that a few hours to dry, preferably overnight, and this is what you will get. If you like your weathering mucky and messy like this right here, then you don't need to do anything else. But if you want to clean it up a little bit and keep most of the weathering in the panel lines and details, Using one of your cotton buds, you can clean off all of that excess that you don't want on there. If this doesn't come off with a dry cotton bud, then you can use a tiny amount of your lighter fluid to clean that excess off. But I will mention on this particular kit right here, which is the Zaku 2 from Gundam The Origin, it does have a rubbery plastic used on its pipes, and this did not work. It oxidized into a kind of white substance. So this can really only be used on standard hard plastic. I actually had to fix all this white oxidization with one of Citadel's washes. In this case, it was Reichland Flesh Shade. And of course, at this point, you might be like, well, why don't I just use something like that? And you could, 
but I find it doesn't give as good an effect on straight up untreated plastic. There's an example of the oil paint on top, the Reichland flesh shade on the bottom machine gun, but the one thing I will mention about this particular technique with the oil paint is, if you do want to ever touch your Gundam again, this is going to have to be fixed with a top coat. So that is it for the video and that was my 10 cheap and lazy Gunpla hacks. And I will advise that these are the cheap and lazy way to do things. Not necessarily the right way to do things. There's tons of awesome tutorials out there from awesome people of how to treat your Gunpla with absolute respect and make them awesome. Also, I do have to say thank you one more time to the sponsor of this video, which was Skillshare. So if you're looking to learn something new, something awesome this year, check out that link down there in the description. The first 500 of you guys to sign up through that link will get two months premium access. And of course, if you have any Gunpla hacks of your own that you use all the time, tried and tested, we'll drop them down there in the comments so we can all try them out. But anyway, as always, thank you so much for watching. If you like this kind of video, hit that like button to let me know. As always, make sure to come back for more Gunpla reviews, and as always, I'll see you next time.